What's up guys, Ligaya Rossler here, and welcome back to Let's Play Legend of Ligaya. In the last episode, we came here to Urumais, and we were looking at dreams from Gala and Noah. And unfortunately, I didn't have enough time to actually get the Vaughn's dream in the last episode, so we're going to go ahead and do that in this episode. And, uh, wow, it's a pretty red, or should I say orange? I think Gala had, like, the longest path. Maybe Vaughn does, to be honest, because I've been doing like so many loops, circles, not circles, just like zigzaggy movement. Anyways, let's not waste any time. Let's go to Vaughn's dream. But of course, I will read the text because, you know, some people who want to watch this don't actually want to watch it. They want to listen, so... Suddenly, serene words enter Vaughn's mind. So yeah, everything is stayed. Everything stays the same pretty much, like with the text, just the name and the roster changes with each character. <laughs> Far, what are you doing? You can't go by yourself. So yeah, Vaughn, I forgot to say that Va Vaughn is the silent protagonist in the game. Look, Gala, Vaughn is sleeping. No, can you hear? Okay, so Tara says the same thing too. Tara says the same thing to uh, Vaughn when Gala is sleeping. And the same thing to Gala when Vaughn is sleeping. Oh, this song again, yes. This song is so awesome. When the baby was born, there was too much hemorrhaging. Oh. If only we had Drake water, then Nora would be alright. Oh, so that must have been Vaughn's mom. Who, who was hemorrhaging a lot from having birth. With this mist, it would be next to impossible to reach Drake Castle. Oh, Vaughn. <laughs> Vaughn, what are you doing? Don't eavesdrop like that. <laughs> so go pay your respects. <sighs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Gonna be going now. Vaughn, take good care of your mother. Oh, and there goes Vaughn's little sister. Oh, I get to move Vaughn. <laughs> goo goo gaga. <laughs> if only we had Drake water. If only there was no mist. No mist. Don't worry, Vaughn. I was just talking to myself. Your mother will get better. So, I can walk. And move around with Vaughn. Vaughn, it's almost dark. Don't go outside the wall now. What? Damn. Shit, yo. Why'd you go and do that, Vaughn? <sighs> Val, you can't wait until the wind changes direction in the morning. If I cannot convince you otherwise, then so be it. I give my permission to open the gate. Oh, so that's how Val ended up, uh, with like a broken leg or something. Because all Vaughn wanted to do was get water to save his mother. Vaughn returned to... Vaughn managed to turn safely from Drake Castle. But, oh, okay. Yeah, that explains. That explains why. So. Google guy, she says the same thing. So, let's go outside.
<laughs> Vaughn, do not blame yourself for the past. Do not feel guilty. The past cannot be changed. Instead, you must be brave and work to create the future. That is what it means to be human. For humans are those who are brave enough to create their own future. Again, so many good points that in, in this game lead up to what society lead up to what society should be in today's culture. And yet no one really understands that nowadays. Okay, so we are being transported outside again. And this is the last time. Excuse me. I just had like some hot pockets earlier, so I'm like, I keep, you know, burping and shit. Yes, we are all finished with our dreams, so we are able to talk to Teague now in complete sentences. Man, that light is so bright. Oh my god. We shall teach you the past, we shall teach you the future. That is Teague's gift. That is the mission of Teague, the Suru human, and both Suru and human. Both Suru and human. Okay. So now we can talk to Teague. In the beginning, there was Teague, and Teague was everything. Then Teague divided himself into two. Those were human and Suru. Teague also divided the, two, the world into two. The human world and Suru Kai. To protect two worlds, Teague placed ten Genesis trees in human world, and a mother Genesis tree in Suru Kai. To govern Suru Kai, Teague chose a small group of Suru and gave them special Rostri power. A thousand years ago, by the human calendar, the Rosaru rogue plotted behind Teague's back. Rogue gave the humans Suru, but humans covet the Suru's power, bringing chaos to the human world. Teague learned of the plot of the Rosaru rogue and sealed him in the eternal dungeon of Rogue. But a, free, but a few Suru in the human world were left to serve humans and had built civilization with Suru. The mist is the breath of the evil rogue, but the mist covering Ligaya was created by humans. Teague sealed the Rosaru into human worlds into the human world's Genesis trees. He or and he ordered them. Help the compassionate humans save the world if a rogue or other evil presence should appear. Let's read this middle one. Did Teague tell you everything? Yes, he did. Vaughn, Noah, Gala, do the three of you now understand the Suru, Rosaru, and Teague? Yes. Teague knows all. Now Teague will entrust you with the fire droplet. Awesome. The fire droplet from an age when chaos was the world and the world was chaos. The fire droplet is chaos and chaos is the fire droplet. <laughs> Teague, the pure, perfect being, Suru human, who is only of spirit only. He shall now answer the hopes of human and Rosaru by opening the door to his world here and now. You're scared. Scared of what? We must make room for Teague. I don't know what this is supposed to be doing, but okay. Look, humans, Teague has brought the two worlds together into one. Chaos is summoned. The fire droplet is chaos. Teague now returns to chaos. So... What? Teague's gone. Huh.
That is mad bright. Humans, take the fire droplet. Ooh. Look at the pretty shiny. Teague has left the humans with not with this knowledge. Teague, use your courage. Gala, use your pride. And Noah, use your hope. With these three things, knowledge will create the future. Never forget that. A dream? Was this all a dream? Was that all a dream, I should say? Apparently not. Now has the fire droplet. Awesome! Hope we can meet again someday. <laughs> Okay, so now that we've got the fire droplet, uh, what's happening? Oh, shit! Yo, we cannot fight Juggernaut right now. Oh, wow, an FMV, wow. I've not seen this in a while, or seen any of them in a game in a while. Damn, that thing's ugly. Yo! Good thing we got the fire droplet in time. Holy shit! The fuck? <laughs> okay. And now we can never borrow the power of T again. Why would they unleash Juggernaut? Alright, so now that Miss is covered up. Oh, Sarah, what are you doing here again? What? Are you having a party with a monster like that on the loose? What are you doing? Exactly, Sarah, what are you doing here? Ha <laughs> Well, that's a fine how do you do. I can do whatever I want, wherever I want. That doesn't explain why you're here, though. Hey, Sarah, why don't you give that egg of a Rosaru you have? <laughs> egg of a Rosaru? <laughs> oh, you mean this Rosaru egg? No, she needs it to survive the mist. Huh? <laughs> no, we're not giving you our fire droplet. If you awaken Boomer's Genesis tree like you did in the one in Seoul, then I'll give you my Rossiru egg as a reward. That was your plan from the very beginning? Well, get to it, kids. I'm pretty sure Vaughn and Gala are around the same age as you are, Sarah. Maybe, you're maybe a little older than them, but that doesn't consider them kids. <laughs> well, if I said it was for love, little kids like you wouldn't understand anyway. <laughs> Vaughn, what's love? <laughs> Does that have something to do with the Genesis tree? You're still too young to know. <laughs> Vaughn, you're so mean. I don't care anyway. I'll figure it out on my own. <laughs> 
Okay, so now I'm mist is covered up here. So we'll be sure to fight enemies. But I'll go ahead and meet you guys back at Doc at the Yusha Laboratory. All right, guys, we made it back here to Usha's research center. We're about to go up to talk to Dr. Yusha himself so we can uh, give him the fire droplets. So, yeah, sending us an elevator. And uh, Atma Illumina is offline now. Hey, you knuckleheads, the visitors are on the st elevator. Start winding. <laughs> knuckleheads I've not heard anyone say that in such a long time anyways let's go ahead and go to dr. Yusha's so we can give him this fire droplet let's talk to you now ho 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 amazing simply amazing you came back with the fire droplets Tell me, tell me about Uramize. Tell me about your dreams. About Teague. About the fire droplets. <laughs> Doctor. Doctor Yusha. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yes, I suppose you're right. We have no time to waste if we ha if we are to free the world from the mist. So yeah, he quickly realizes that he needs the fire droplet so he can make us a time-space bomb. Assistant 1, Assistant 2. Super saturate power stones with dragon water. Throw that into the mix. <laughs> oh, the fire droplet! Oh no! Sometimes I even impress myself. Four time space bombs? Well, one for blasting open the entrance to Navora Ravine. Place it in front of the block of ice at the entrance and press the switch. The bomb will explode three seconds after you press the switch, so find shelter quickly. The other three must be set off simultaneously. In Navora Ravine, the road splits into three tunnels. Thunder tunnel, fire tunnel, and wind tunnel. You must each enter a separate tunnel. Each tunnel leads to Koru. When you get all, when you all get there, you must set the space time the time space bombs at the same time. Koru will only be destroyed by a combined blast of all three bombs. Good luck, I know you can do it. You can melt the ice of Buma. Okay, so with that, we need to go up north to Navora Ravine, and this part of the game, you are pretty much 70% done with the game. I mean, after you beat this, you're pretty much almost done now, um, but anyways, I'm going to go ahead and save the game so that I can get ready to do the next episode. So with that being said, it's Ligai Rossi who's signing out. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Please rate, comment, and subscribe, and as always, stay gaming. See you later.